Shalom. Ko halo Yahweh Bahasham Yahushai Bahasham Rakaha Kodash. Double honors unto the apostles, double honors unto the elder bishops. Salutations to all my fellow laborers doing this work in truth and sincerity, risking their lives and their freedom to do so now more so than ever. <clears throat> my fellow laborers, the 144,000 and the scattered elect that are scattered around the four corners of the earth that be like unto the speckled bird, the Israelite foreigners among the heathen that look like the heathen. This is not a black thing. And to the few Akwaf that are listening and learning to you, I say Shalom. This is your brother Malcolm I'm from the branch of the Great Millstone here in Chicago, coming at you another lesson in truth. And uh, this lesson is sparked from a conversation that I had with my, uh, hold on, let me close this door, Salakia. Guard beast. Can't walk down his street without him letting you know. <laughs> All right. Um. But I had a conversation with uh, uh one of my clients. He's a, a Elamite, and um, you know, once they realize that you're not all rah 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 pro American, the heathen that are here that have got high above thee, one of, you know the curses. In Deuteronomy, the, the stranger that is among thee shall get high above, above thee very high. You know, uh, he agreed with, with me and opened up to me, you know, when he saw that I'm not some uh, dumb, blindly dumb, patriotic American who thinks that America is just good all the time and does everything right, you know. Um, and he, you know, and he kind of opened up and how Westerners are... are naive and um and it basically in an arrogant stupor they're stupid in their in their arrogance to 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 a blinding trust in their media and he, you know and if they put it on tv then obviously it's true all right and you know we were talking about the current you know how close we are to world war three and uh and that this is all america and nato's fault not russia's fault because you know russia being on on the you know you know, on the uh, just on the outskirts of America in, in in Cuba, he also he also knew about all those uh, those thirty nine people, um, presidential candidates that all died down in 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 Mexico, and now you got a Jewish woman in there, or you know, or someone that's definitely for the NGO of the JWO uh, uh, persuasion down in, in being a president in Mexico because Mexico had actually uh, put in for membership of the BRICS and was more than likely going to be accepted. All right, so, and Russia is taking a very aggressive stance and doing the same thing to America, you know, which is the stronghold of NATO, which is the stronghold of the West by putting its uh, attack capability at its front doors, in its backyard, in its front, on, on its front porch, so to speak. Because that's what America has been doing to, you know, uh, Russia and China for the last 30-something years. You know, NATO has been getting closer and closer to their borders and in a position to where they can have dominance should, should war break out. And war is going to break out. It's definitely going to happen, right? And the digital currency is coming as a result of it. So, and it's funny, that the, I saw these two videos that you've seen on the screen separately, had gathered them up separately, and when I pulled up Christopher Green's video, Gravitas' video pulled up right under it. So I'm going to play both videos and then, you know, get some scriptures. But first, let's, uh, he's going to talk about the MOTB. So I'm going to read Revelation 19, which is talking about both the war and the MOTB, basically. Because the, the, the two kind of go hand in hand. But Revelation 19 and 11. And it reads. And I saw heaven open and behold a white horse. That set upon him was called faithful and true. And righteousness he doth judge and make war. That's Yahweh Shai. He's coming to judge and make war. His eyes were a flame of fire. And his head were many crowns. And he had a name written that no man knew but himself. And he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood. And his name was called the Word of God. All right. And that name is, is Yahweh Shai. 
because the world embraces the fraud, the fraudulent name Jesus. All right. Or Yeshua, Yahweh. All right. The, the aftermarket, uh, you know, Yiddish based Christianity lies that they propagated to the whole world. All right. And the armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses, clothed in fine linen and, and clean. Now, this is they're not actually on horses. They're on what you call UFOs and UAPs, the chariots of Israel. That's what they are. That's what all those things in the skies you've been seeing that the that the media just likes to uh, cover up by saying that they're aliens. No, those are the angels. That's the army of heaven. That's the Lord's army coming to take down all the mountains and hills that are here upon the face of the earth. Mountains represent large countries and hills represent smaller countries. All right. And it says. And out of his mouth go off a sharp sword. With it, he should smite the nations and he shall rule them with the rod of iron. And he tread of them in the winepress of the fierceness of the wrath of the almighty. Just like it says in, in Isaiah 66 or 60, uh, 63, when he's coming to destroy Edom. Because not only is he coming to destroy Edom and take them out of power, but all the heathen that are joined to them. All right. And it says. And and he have on his vesture and on his thigh, the name written. The king of kings and lords of lords. And I saw the angel standing in the sun and they cried out with a loud voice saying to all the fowls that that. Let's turn it off. To so all the uh, the fowls that fly in the midst of heaven, come and gather yourselves together unto the supper of the great God. Because all, you know, because America, there's going to be no supper here in America because America is going to be burned up and wiped off the face of the earth and left as a memorial. That's going, that's your lake of fire. All right. That's when, when, you know, when, when hell and, and death get thrown into the lake of fire. All right. That's how you know that there's no hell. Hell is a condition. The hell is condition that's created by Esau, Edom, the so-called white man is going to be thrown into the lake of fire, which is going to be Babylon, because all of Europe, all of NATO, the whole world is going to turn on America and the Israelis. And if you really got eyes to see, you can see it already starting to happen because the least of the flock has basically drawn everyone into this. Because when you get to the root of the things, they're responsible for Ukraine and then everything that's going on in, the, in, in Western Asia, which they fraudulently call the Middle East. And it says uh, that ye may eat the flesh of kings and the flesh of captains and the flesh of mighty men and the flesh of horses and of them that sit on them and the flesh of all men, both free and bond, both small and great. So the Lord's going to kill all, all these people. All right, he's going to kill a lot. They said it's going to be death from one end of the earth to the other. All right. Um, verse 19. And I saw the beasts and the kings of the earth and the armies that were gathered to make war against him that sat on the horse and against his army. All right. And the beast and the beast being NATO was taken with him, the false prophet, the Catholic church that wrought miracles before him and which deceived them that received the mark of of the of the beast and them that worshiped his image these both were cast alive into the lake of fire burning with brimstone all right and that's the fire that's going to be created when the lord comes and shoots shoots the, the fire down from the from the uaps ufos and then when he takes over uh you know the the arrows that fly from one end to the earth and guide them uh mostly here to america to to wipe it off the face of the earth and Israel, the difference is, is that the land of Israel is going to be rebuilt by the Israelites as they return from all four corners of the earth from among all people, all right, which is, hasn't happened yet. When they come down, you know, when he says, I saw a new Jerusalem coming down from heaven, when they come down off the chariots. Okay. Well, here we go. Here of islandproject.com. Global currency collapse, massive hyperinflation here in the United States, Bitcoin hash wars, digital reset, and a major announcement you've never heard before. 
in today's video, the U.S. government and the West will be announcing a digital freedom coin very, very soon. A digital quote-unquote freedom coin. Now, again, I've been reporting on this for years now, decades now. It started with an SDR, a special drawing. In his defense, he has, but then so have the men of the Lord. Because, you know, he also likes to talk about the Bible and the Lord, and he's way off, all right? Because Jesus is not the name, and the Lord is not coming for everyone. He's only coming for Israel, and on top of that, he's only coming for the elect of Israel. Two-thirds of Israel is going to die right along with Christopher Green. And, you know, if he's, well, he's in Hawaii right now, so he might be the first fruits of slavery. All the Edomites that survive are going to be the first fruits of slavery, which are the, the super rich, wealthy elites and all their bunkers. They're, they're going to survive it, and they're going to go straight into slavery, coming out, get pulled out of those bunkers right into chains from, from riches to rags instantly. Right which was crafted kind of before the digital currency revolution and that move into what they then dubbed CBDCs. But they're not going to release a CBDC. They're going to release a new product with a new name. And it's going to be called something like Freedom Coin here in the United States of America, but it'll be anything but freedom. They always do that. They have a sales pitch. They tell you like it's something good, like it sounds good. Oh, it's a freedom coin. You're going to want to use this cashless, trackable, surveilled, taxed, restricted, and censored freedom coin. So this is what is coming next. And you must understand that this global World War III hash rate race into blockchain as and blockchain and everything he just said is absolutely true. And that comes with and it's something inserted bio into your skin, into yourself. All right. I just watched some Bollywood movie and that's all it was about was, was, you know, bio upgrades. And they already saying that phones will be in your hands. Just like if you watch the newer version that came out with, uh, with, uh, what's her name? Kate Beckinsale and, and Colin, it's Colin, Colin Farrell. Um, what was it? The, you know, the remake of uh, uh, the movie that Arnold did. Uh, some of you already know what I'm talking about. But in that movie, uh, you know, his the phone was actually inside of his arm. He had to pull it out to hide so they couldn't track him. And that's where we're going. And that's all a part of the MOTB. This is Revelation 13 and 16. And it reads, and he calls them all both great and small, rich and poor, free and bond to receive a mark in their right hand or their foreheads, all right, that no man may not buy or sell, save that he have the, the, the karagma, all right, and the name of the beast or the number of his name, all right? So if you don't have the karagma, if you don't have this thing in you, you won't be able to participate in society and you will eventually starve and die. Which is why it clearly said, and then, you know, it, like the scripture says, uh, if the Lord doesn't return soon, there'll be no flesh left to save. And all this could kick off this summer, and I hope it does. I really do, because I am so tired. Because there's no winning with Esau. When you do everything right and you beat them at their own game, which I have, you know, talking about something else, something personal. You know, they just change the rules as they go around, or they ignore it. Justice has never been, in America has never been so so wrong. Right. You know, than, than, it, than it is now, because, you know, when you when you expose something in court and you're right, what they do is they just sit on it. They ignore it. But you best believe it's the other way around. They're going to they're going to hang your ass out to dry. But let's go to the next video. Let's go back. To this one. Is Putin's Russia ready for world nuclear war? A war plan is being spoken about, a war map is being drawn and broadcast on Russian state TV. This map points at countries where Russia could deploy missiles. Why? To strike the West. 
You heard the Russian President Vladimir Putin say as much that since the West was supplying long-range missiles to Ukraine to strike within Russia, there is nothing to keep Russia from following suit. And just taking that thought forward, the Russian state TV has come up with a map. It basically looks at countries which, according to the news outlet, are quote-unquote ready to strike our enemies. Which are these countries? Cuba, of course, is on the list. That also happens to be where Russian warships and a nuclear submarine are sailing to. They're there already. This is Ezekiel 38 and 1. And the word of Yahweh came unto me, saying, Son of man, set thy face against God and the land of Magog, and the chief prince of Meshach and Tubal prophesy against them. Now these were Japhites, but remember Esau Edom is in Japheth's land, just like Esau, Edom is in America, and, and Gad and Reuben's land. You know, they're everywhere. All right? You know, but the Lord still refers to a land as, as what he called it. All right? But this is, you know, this is the house divided. This is Edomite. This is fulfilling the prophecy. That's how you know it's Edom on Edom, not Japhet on Edom. All right? But it says, and, and yeah, and for you, you want to make, you, you people out there that want to make Japhet the so-called white man, there's no prophecy that says Japheth would enslave and be the wicked and do all the things that Esau Edom is doing. The, the Bible clearly identifies that as Edom. So you need to relearn or just shut up. All right. <clears throat> but it says, verse three, and say, thus said the Lord power. Behold, I am against the old Gog and Magog, Magog, chief prince of Meshach and Tubal. So it's not for the Russians. He's just going to use them to destroy the Western Edomites. And I will turn thee back and put hooks in thy jaws and will bring thee forth and all thy armies and horses and horsemen and all of them clothed with all sorts of armor, every great company with bucklers and shields and all of them handling swords. Persia, Ethiopia, Libya whipped them and all of them with shield and helmet, Gomer and all his bands in the house of Togoma in the north quarters and all his bands and all the people with thee. Be thou prepared and prepare for uh, thyself Thou and all thy company that are assembled unto thee, and be thou a guard unto them, and that, that them is a rhyme. And after these days, thou shalt be visited in the latter years, and thou shalt come into the land that is brought back from the sword and gathered out of many people against the mountains of Israel, which have always been a waste, but it was brought forth out of the nations, and they shall dwell safely, all of them. So Israel is going gonna, is gonna to dwell safely. And that's clearly not what's happening yet. We so which means what? The people over there don't fit the prophecy. They're not the people. And 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 all these people that I'm reading about, all these armies, you know, the Persia, Ethiopia, Libya, they're all gonna be a part of that feast that the birds are gonna have when 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 the Lord comes and visits, you know, the uh, uh the valley of Jehoshaphat, the, the Yahweh Shapat, where he's gonna make his decision because that's where the main battles are gonna go down, outside of the fact that America's gonna get melted. And back into the elements, the main battle is going to happen uh, all throughout Western Asia. All right. It's going to be a worldwide thing, but the Valley of Jehoshaphat is going to be a hotbed. And that's where this great feast. All right. That the Lord's going to send all them birds to go eat all those dead bodies to help clean up. Because that's going to be the first job of the Edomites, the wealthy rich ones, when they go, go into slavery. They're going to have to clean up all the dead bodies of the, all the people that die, including their own. Here's, here's Putin's plan on paper. NATO is now planning to get U.S. troops to the front line to fight Russia. What are they thinking? NATO has disclosed its preparations to deploy American troops to the European front lines in the event of a full-scale conflict with Russia. Innovative land corridors are being established to expedite movement of soldiers through Central Europe, bypassing bureaucratic hurdles. This strategic setup enables NATO forces to swiftly react should Putin's aggressive actions in Ukraine extend westward. Reports suggest that these plans also encompass provisions for potential Russian attacks. In such scenarios, troops could mobilize through corridors in Italy, Greece, and Turkey to reach the Balkans or alternatively advance towards Russia's northern border via Scandinavia. And here's the map that was shared, okay, at how this would occur. U.S. forces airlifted into NATO countries, then taking these corridors straight through bureaucratic corridors. And now look at Turkey. I do believe that if Turkey were to be involved in this way, 
that we would see, I believe we would see the end of Turkey's membership into NATO because um, Turkey is now a BRICS nation. So I'm pretty sure that that's, that's it with them for NATO. All right. But as you can see, Russia's response is the response to NATO's plans that you that we're looking at. I think popular pressure would not allow this. This is an absolutely insane plan to try to mobilize a coherent NATO strategy for war with Russia. And they always say in the event of a potential invasion. But guess what? There is no potential invasion of NATO. Russia has absolutely no interest. What would compel Russia? And I'm going to play how Scott Ritzer responded to all of this. What would compel Russia to do this? Absolutely nothing. This is complete fantasy. This is NATO gone wild. You might have remember those commercials, uh, those really hor horrific exploitative commercials of uh, young girls, right, um, taken on video as they were partying or whatnot, and then it was distributed to the public. Well, this is NATO's version of this. They have gone wild. They are publicly announcing all of these ridiculous plans these horrific plans that would lead to World War III, and all of them essentially amount to desperation. One, that if Russia's actions are taken into consideration, there's absolutely no basis for this. But we will talk about what the real basis for this is after we hear Scott Ritter. So here we go. Sullivan, Austin, etc. President, the Secretary of State, the National Security Advisor, the Secretary of Defense, understand the gravity of this moment as you've explained it or are they just propagandists you know i used to have a friend named william polk and i say he used to because tragically he passed away um a couple of years ago but william polk was a man who was in the inner circle for john f kennedy during the cuban missile crisis and he talks about and he's talked to me many times about the decision making that was going on in the and the role that Kennedy played in preventing a nuclear war, the maturity Kennedy had as a leader. Part of that maturity came from when Kennedy was first briefed on what was then called the Single Integrated Operation Plan, the PSYOP, the American War Plan. He went to the Pentagon and they briefed him. They said, this is if we go to nuclear war, this is what we got. And basically, it was premised on the notion that America will be the largest surviving civilization. But in order to guarantee that, we have to kill everybody in the world. And he huh. came out, that's insane. I'm not doing that. And he turned to his advisor and said, and we call ourselves the human race. And he said, you have to give me options. Every president since then, or up until George W. Bush, reacted the same way. When they first got that briefing on how America plans to go to war, which is to destroy the entire world so that when the 20 to 30 percent of America that survives will be the largest remaining civilization cluster in the world guaranteeing American global dominance in a post-nuclear conflict, insanity. Um, they all said the same thing, insane, give me options. I can't go to that. You can't make me do this. You have to give me options. And the Pentagon always gave them options that inevitably led to that. Since the end of the Soviet Union, the collapse of the Soviet Union, uh, the Americans have downplayed their, their nuclear war plan. Uh, we we detargeted our missiles. Nothing was on automa automatic anymore. We we're heading in a path of, you know, getting rid of nuclear weapons. And then George W. Bush came in a post 9/11 environment and said, "We will use our nuclear weapons to ensure that a 9/11 never happens again." And we reinserted nuclear war planning into our military doctrine. And today we have that same mindset, that same nuclear war strategy, without the maturity of John F. Kennedy. We have people who look at the plan and say, well, that's just a plan. We're not really going to do that. And they say the Russians are bluffing. We don't have to worry about this. The problem is the second something happens and that plan is pulled out, the dust is blushed off, and we start pushing buttons, we go to the scenario that John F. Kennedy said was insanity. Judge, we're going to blow up the entire world because we know that in a post-nuclear environment, we can't allow, for instance, India to survive intact. You see that? So they want to destroy the other nations so that America can stay on top. And how many times have you heard us say the Esau's on that? If I can't have it, no one can. That's where he is. You know, so Revelation 12 and 7, and there was war in heaven, and Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, 
and, and the dragon fought against this angel. That's the angels, the literal angels fighting against NATO and, 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 and uh, uh, the West when, when, the, when the chariots show up, when the UAPs, UFOs come down and they're going to win because they said Michael's going to stand up because when the Lord gives the green light for your Habashai, Michael's going to come down here and wreak havoc and also come to save uh, the children of Israel. Tells you that in Daniel, I believe it's uh, Daniel 12 and 1. Real quick, let me grab it. Yeah, and at that time, shall Michael stand up, the great prince, which stand it for the children of thy people, and there shall be a time of trouble such as never was since there was a nation, even the same time at that time, people shall be delivered, everyone shall be found, that's written in the book. So it's going to be like, you know, uh, uh, escape from New York, escape from L.A., except it's going to be the whole nation. And Michael's going to have to come and save the elect. Call Shai, Bahasham, Kwam Shalawam, Ababa Ball.